What is up guys, welcome back to part 8 of our plugin development series in WordPress using the WordPress boilerplate plugin. And today we're going to continue off on the kind of little part 2 of our short code uh, part of this series. I know it's like a 1-2 in the 7-8, which sounds really funny. <laughs> anyway, uh, this is like a micro part or mini part 2, um, overall part 8. And what we're going to do today is we're going to actually use our general settings codes that are our general settings that I have set up and saved in earlier videos to do a little bit of fun stuff on the front end. Uh, I know, right? Define fun. But uh, we're going to do a couple of different things with it just to give you some ideas as to how you can use your inputted data by the user to accomplish different goals on the front end of your site or wherever you're going to output the data. So here we are in our class public name. I close everything else. This is under public and a class plugin name. This is where it's calling the short code actually calls to to get its code. And so in this case, it's hello world. Uh, in this case, and so back on the front end of our site, if we refresh it, it just says hello world because that is where we outputted our short code and that's what it's doing. However, I want to do something a little bit different, which is I want to make a determination based on the option the user selected from here. I want it to do something different with this. Well, how do we accomplish that? Well, the user put out two here. And let's go ahead and show, I'll show you an example of how to determine that. Let's say get the general settings options. There's actually a pretty simple way to do this, guys. Uh, you're never going to believe it. It looks like this. Well, if I can actually get to the spot. All right. It's going to look like this. Let's just say user option user option and if you guys remember when we set up our feet our back in our partials and the admin display page on that partial we had that form right where we registered these settings and also we could find these from uh, the admin um, I don't believe it's here yeah it is right here where we registered those settings email the days the multi-select so we can also take them from here too so let's say the email or the days right or let's just say that's really what this should be it should really be uh, user days all right and guess what we're going to do? You're never going to believe it. And now we have the days. I know, difficult, right? Okay, here's what we're going to do. So instead of hello world, let's just say day, number, space. And in uh, PHP, we concatenate with a period. And we're going to do the variable we just grabbed, which is user days. Let's go to our front end and do a refresh and guess what it's going to say. Oh, look at that. It says day number two. Let's go to our back end and let's go for four. Submit the settings. Our plugin now has saved the four. Back over here, we're going to have a four. Yep, just like we thought. Okay. So now let's do something a little more fun with this, right? Because it's kind of boring. It just outputs day number and all that. Well, let's do something a little bit different. Instead of just say hello, let's say different message based on day if user day equals equals it's two equal sign not one it can even do a triple equals but double one equals will make it equal one so let's say it equals one open this up and then we're going to go for an else if. I believe else ifs are together in PHP. It's been a minute though, but I believe else ifs are one. In uh, Visual Basic, they actually look a little different. They look like, uh, some of them look like this, and some of them look like this. I believe this is the else if. And we're going to say else if this. We could also do a select case for this too, but I'm just going to go like this. Right? And now what we can do is we can go like this. Boop, boop. And I think one more boop. I don't know. Three, four, and five. Okay, so we now have options for all of our user selected um, uh, options. And we're going to now make a determination and do something with this data. Let's go like this user email equals get option. Guess what I'm going to call here? Just take a quick guess. You probably guessed it. I'm getting the email the user submitted as the email. Okay, so now we're going to do a little bit of echoing. We're going to say if it, the equals one, we're going to say 
user email is one and done son all right see that now we have the email and the one and done son okay let's add echoes to all of these all right so now we're gonna say is two 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 we're just trying to make these drastically different so that we can see what each one is and I'm gonna actually put this one beforehand instead right yeah and it's a little bit different we don't need that plugin or I mean that um, concatenation at the beginning all right and let's just say three is the user's email and then we're just gonna say four 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 and write five 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 I know this is all jumbled up I'm just trying to get something drastic so that you can see the difference okay so technically it should say user email and four 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 and it should have no space because I didn't include a space let's try to include some spaces actually and right there all right I would have commented what you these do as well by the way all right so we should have a four 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 right Check that out. So now it output something different because it read from our settings. So let's go for one, because I want to see it say one and done, son. Okay. Let's hit a refresh back here. All right, you see what's happening here? It's doing exactly what we wanted it to do. It's reading from our multi or from our dropdown. It's getting the option real time. It's determining what the user has selected and input, and it's actually outputting our data. See that? So this if statement is doing what it is supposed to do, and it's uh, calling in what it's supposed to call in, and it's doing everything it's supposed to do. Now the cool part is this is full on PHP. We can do anything here. We can call in APIs. We can call in pictures. We can call in a uh, jQuery. I mean, we can call in anything. We can do uh, require once is for files. We can do, I mean, anything you want to do is available to you right here because it's just full on PHP. So we can do anything we want to do. We can enqueue anything we want to do. And I was going to show you how to output information that users have saved. See, because we created this plugin from scratch. We gave it its menu. It's it's partial. We created two fields of savable data. I will get to the multi-select too. I just haven't got to it. And save them, saved them to our database, then registered our short codes, created a short code, read the settings, and then if statemented based on the settings, if the user days is equal to one, which that's whatever they drop down. I want you to do this. Otherwise, I want you to do this. Otherwise, I want you to do this. And then if they had selected nothing, if there was no, we would actually go for a final else. And it would just say something like, uh, You selected no days, right? So that way if there was nothing, it would return that. You can also do that in get option by going like this and then it's a default value. So in this case, it would just be like zero. And then it would be a default value. So but we're not gonna do that in this particular case. We're gonna, um, cause the user can't unselect something once they've selected something from the dropdown. And uh, that's a pretty quick um, video part eight. I just really wanted to show you how to take your options and output them in the front end of your site or into your short codes. Now, you can use these options anywhere. You can use them in partials. You can use them in any functions. You can use them in any pages to determine what the user wants, have them set settings, get those options, and then do uh, run code based on those options. Do some syntax or some um, logic based on what the user has put in. Because for example, say that you gave the user the ability to um, change your entire site based on like a user's input. Say like after, okay, here's a, here's a, uh, like a random uh, plugin idea. If it's after eight o'clock at night, run this version of my website. And you could have them say, what time of day do you want the site to change? Oh, okay. Let's say that between 12 and three every day, you want your site to redirect somewhere. Okay, well, we could create a plugin for that and we could check the time using a, using code and then we could say, okay, what does the user set in the settings in the database? Oh, they said they wanted to redirect, redirect them. Right, there's so many ideas on how to, on what you can do with this. It's really endless. I mean, the information I've already given you so far, you have the ability to set up a settings page, give it infinite amounts of fields, use bootstrap, and then be able to call in those variables and output whatever you want with those variables via a short code, a partial, um, hook, so I think what we're going to do is I think I'm going to go ahead and create a YouTube API importer. We're going to import some videos. There's lots of uh, plugins for this already, but we're just going to create our own. 
and we're going to import some YouTube videos, I think, and then we're going to create some different bootstrapped out like ways to display the information to the user and then maybe even save those options to our database so that we don't have to use the API call every time. I don't know, something kind of exciting and fun like that so that we can actually get something fun and visually appealing and something that's useful versus just like some hello world or something like that. Anyway, that wraps us up on part eight. Thanks for coming along this far uh, to this point and this far along. Uh, I don't know how many more there are going to be. I think there's going to be quite a bit more. I think we're only a little ways into what's going to end up being a lot of uh, playing around with plugins and getting an idea of how they all work using a simple object-oriented plugin boilerplate. Like, subscribe, comment. I appreciate it. And I look forward to seeing you guys in part nine.